What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. Today I've got my hands on the latest Mikul K5 hybrid Android TV box. So that means you have a full Android OS built in and also a multi TV tuner. So that's DVB-T2, DVB-S2 and DVB-C giving you free local television without needing an internet connection. So this is basically a satellite set top box with built in Android. So best of both worlds online and offline. Quickly go through the specs. Now this box is powered by the S905X3 quad-core CPU along with the Mali G31. You've got 2 gigs of LP DDR3 RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, dual band Wi-Fi AC with 2x2 two two MIMO, so you've got dual Wi-Fi antennas. This has Bluetooth 4.2, 100 megabyte LAN. You've got built-in multi-TV tuners. This supports PVR functions, so you can record directly to USB. You've got full Android version 9 Pi, supports HDMI version 2.0, supports 4K HDR at 60 frames per second, apparently supports HDR 10 plus and 5.1 surround sound. Inside the box, you will get a user manual, HDMI cable, a power supply, and the voltage is 12 watts, one amp. You're also getting a full featured remote control, with lots of features here like PVR, EPG, volume control, play, pause, skip, etc. Now this remote control is powered by two AAA batteries and it is a standard infrared remote control. So here it is made from plastic. You've got this K design on the front, Miku logo, physical power button. On the front, there is nothing. On the side, there is nothing. On the back, you've got your TV tuners, both DVB-T2, DVB-S2, and you've got a CVBS port 100 megabyte LAN, HDMI out, your optical audio, power socket, and if we keep going, you've got a micro SD card slot, USB 2, USB 3, and that brings us back to the front. And this is what the bottom of the box looks like. So without any further ado, let's get this all hooked up to my TV and capture card and find out exactly how good it really is. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this TV box took 40 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And here is the Mikul trademark home screen, which I've not seen in quite a while. So you have the local time at the top right. First row is for your favorite apps and you can fit eight of your favorite apps at any one time. Bottom shortcuts are all fixed. Now if we head over to the main system settings, go to device preferences and check out the system storage info, you will see that this box has 16 gigs of internal storage from which you have 11 gigs free to use. Now if we go into about, you will see that this box is running Android version 9 Pi. Now let's have a look at the complete system apps. Here are all the apps available on this box as standard. I have not installed anything yet and you have quite a few apps to get you started, including Chrome, Miracast, Kodi, Netflix, YouTube, and the official Google Play Store. But looking at the Play Store, for some reason, there are hardly any apps to download. It seems like all the popular apps are missing. Nevertheless, the first app we need to test is Miracast, which is screen mirroring for your Android smartphones. And I tested this with my P30 Pro and it was quick and easy to connect and it worked very well with minimal lag. Now this box also comes pre-installed with AirPin Pro, which is screen mirroring for your iOS devices. And that also worked absolutely fine with minimal lag. So this box supports screen mirroring for both Android and iOS devices. So now I'm going to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and I will be doing this with the included Kodi media player. So let's begin with the usual high bitrate Jellyfish demo. So as you can see the Jellyfish demo is playing OK but thereafter I tested 4K60 with HDR and it failed to play the clip correctly. This happened with all three demo clips H265 4K60 with HDR10. So we do seem to have some issues playing 4K60 from USB drive. Now let's move on to the 4K YouTube test. So my first test clip, a 4K 60fps YouTube video streamed okay. There were a few frame drops, but it did the job I suppose. And that said, 4K 30 was actually a much smoother experience. Now the pre-installed Netflix works, but you need to connect a mouse in order to navigate. You cannot use the standard remote control, and that's not all. Maximum streaming quality is capped at 540p, so no HD or 4K available on Netflix.
Now as the Play Store has none of the apps which I usually use for my tests, I had to sideload them all and this includes Amazon Prime, CPU-Z, DRM Info and many more. There was also no Asphalt or Modern Combat to test the gaming on this box. So quite disappointed with the Play Store. So eventually got Amazon Prime Video installed and again maximum resolution supported 480p. And I also noticed another app store available. I opened it up and guess what guys, it was completely blank. So it does seem like this box has a lot of flaws. And now for the moment for this box to redeem itself with its free offline TV feature. So I connected my TV antenna to the box, opened up the DTV app, followed the on-screen instructions to auto scan the channels and I was momentarily quite excited to see so many channels being picked up. Um, I believe it picked up around 99 channels and 33 radio channels, including HD channels. But, whilst the channels appeared to play fine, the talking was not in sync. And we had a lot of freezing and stuttering going on, and these were SD channels. I, I am, like, so so terrible overall live TV experience, and there was no setting I could find to rectify this. Yes, you do have many features like full seven day EPG guide, PVR timers, but all of that seems quite useless if the actual channels cannot play smoothly. So absolutely disappointed with the live television feature. Now for you advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level three, and here is CPU-Z where you can check out the clock speeds and you can see we're running the Mali G31. This box is running Android version 9 and does not come rooted as standard. In the internal disk speed test we achieved 75 megabytes per second read and 15 megabytes per second write. So there you have it guys, that was the new MiCool K5 hybrid Android TV box. So you can see my pros and cons. This box is probably one of the worst TV boxes I've tested this year. I did not even bother with the gaming test or the benchmark test. This box is totally not worth the price. Even with the S905X3, which is one of my favorite chips of this year, this box failed to perform as it should. Now, I believe the reason is the RAM. Two gigs of inferior DDR3 RAM is just not enough. It makes this box struggle with every single task. If they just added one more gig of RAM or used DDR4 RAM, this would have been a totally different story. I don't know what manufacturers are thinking or doing, but it seems like this is a massive step backwards and a huge shame. Um, it makes me think that did they even QC this box? Did, was this box even tested by the company? I just hope none of you have bought this box already. There are much better TV boxes out there in this price range or even less and I will link them for you in the description box for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching. Do hit the like button if you like my honest reviews. If you've already bought this box, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did you experience the same as me? Meanwhile, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.